everyone, I'm Rosh Chef Yin and uh, today on today's IG Live, I will be speaking to Lindsay of Durian Writer um, on all things Durian. So let me just pin this here and um, so people can know what it's about. Oh, is it too long? Ah, I can't pin it. Hold on, <laughs> let me try and type. Uh, that's weird. Okay, I'm just going to type it in. Chat with Julian Writer. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Miojo. Hello, Joyful Lassie. Hello, Adadudi. Hello, Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah. Hello, George Light. Hello, Watermelon and Lime. Glad you can make it on time. All right. Let me just wait here. I'm on. Okay. Hi, Lindsay is here. Duran Writer joined. Um. You sent the request, awesome view request. Let's see if this works. Good morning from Nigeria, awesome. Okay. Oh, this is Hey, Lindsay hey, Richard. Oh, wow, Durians. <laughs> Are you tempting us? <laughs> Yeah. Hundred percent raw. Yeah. Hundred percent raw. Yes. <laughs> I think the noise box. So I can take off the headset. Hold on. <laughs> it's chaos here, but it's great. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Just um. But I know week he's always very hectic, but um, surviving it. Yeah, and just yeah. excited to see you guys again. And yeah. Happy, happy bit to know that you're, um, yeah, that you contributed to the bundle again this time. So, uh, for those who don't know, Lindsay contributed the uh, durian bounties recipe in the um, collector's edition of the group collaboration ebook for this year's Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle 2023. And uh, if you want to get the bundle, you can get it from either one of our links. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to talk to Lindsay about all things durian today. <laughs> to get it from Yen's link, because you're doing all the work this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you are on to her. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, maybe, Lindsay, you want to just uh, introduce yourself uh, a bit for those who don't know who you are and what you do, and then we'll get okay. into things about durians. Okay, yeah. So my name is Lindsay and I'm from the United States originally, but I've been traveling in Southeast Asia for about 14 years now and 12 of them specifically for durians. So I kind of got into it by accident because I went vegan and then I went raw vegan and I went to some events to learn more about raw veganism and that's where I found out that durian existed because before that I had no idea and I got very, very interested and curious. So I went to a local Asian store and bought a frozen one. I liked it immediately, but I was so fascinated by it because it's such a big fruit and it's so unusual. And all these people around me were talking about how wonderful it was and how tasty, and they said it was very healthy for you, a superfood, kind of like a magic drug almost, you know? Like it was very, very like um, spiritual for some people almost. And it got my curiosity a lot. So when I um, turned 20, I ended up traveling to Southeast Asia specifically to find out what durian was, where does it grow, stuff like that. Um, I was supposed to spend one year and I ended up being here for 12. And <laughs> on the way, I started a website and my website was just to first document my own travels in the more rural areas for durian, um, turned into a travel agency helping other people to travel for durian, which is we do durian tours and stuff like that. And now we also shipping like kind of curated durian boxes to people in the United States and Canada. So yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, wow. You're like, yeah, but you're like living the dream, you know, like <laughs> being surrounded yeah. by durians. I mean, durian is like my favorite fruit. Every time someone asks me like, what's your uh, most favorite fruit in the world? I always answer durian. So I'm just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, really. 
Well, we, we kind of got a lot of stuff here. So, I oh, can take yeah. You so, if you're interested. Yes, please, please do tell people what it is, what it's all about, yeah, what it tastes like, because some people have no idea and some people have like some strange misconceptions about the fruit, which we hope to uh, bust the myths today. Yeah. So, where are people coming from today? I want to leave them in the, the comments here where everybody's from. Um, yeah, guys, type it before. In. Yeah. <laughs> And so, also, because so many people are coming in, if you guys have questions, please put it into the question uh, box so that yeah, I yeah. can actually see it and, and read it out to um, Lindsay. And there's a lag. Yeah. There's a lag. The questions don't pop up right away. So we need uh, time to be able to get your questions to answer them. Yeah. But yeah, this uh, is Durian. This is a small one. <laughs> this is um, a variety here in Thailand called the Puang Mani. And there are many, many, many varieties of durian all over the world, just like there are many varieties of apples. Um, a durian is a spiky fruit, a large fruit, and the inside, I don't think we can get one open. Richard, are you still eating that durian? No, I can we show them the inside? Okay, Richard's going to open one for you guys. Okay, cool. So we have people from Malaysia, from Massachusetts, from One Earth. Uh, someone's from South Africa. She says no. Uh, the person says no durian here. Although I, you you were in you did do a visit to Africa, right? We've been to Tanzania. That's the only country we've been to. Yeah, they uh, have lots of durian. Okay. So durian vacay, definitely head up Zanzibar. Ah uh, yes, Zanzibar. Now I remember. Someone wants to know if Malaysia durian season officially started already. Durian season in Malaysia has started yeah. in Penang, but it's on kind of like a low season so i would wait about a month before i traveled there for durian if i was going for the peak time there's my partner richard hi hey richard this piece already eaten okay. <laughs> india but lived in us and traveled to malaysia singapore and thailand they have Ooh. durian in india and in southern india have they had the Indian grown durian? I don't know. Gaurav. Uh, watermelon and lime says no durian in Germany either. Oh. Funky Diva so says. what it looks like on the inside. Ooh. It can be white, it can be bright yellow, it can be orange, and it can also be red. Many different colors depending on the variety. Do we have a knife? Um, a knife's over there in my bag. Someone says, I like soursop. Have any? <laughs> like sour stuff? Okay. I don't really like sour <laughs> I like sour salt, but us does not like sour Yeah. Yeah. And Tropical Rambutan like says texture. have a lot in Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So we've been out collecting fruit all day today. We've got some Pulasan. Pulasan, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do they call it in uh, Thailand? Uh, they call, call it Nok Pulasan, actually. Oh, it's not okay. really from here. It's been introduced at some point, but they grow oh, in it here now. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. There are little bitty organic mango seeds. Oh. Yeah. Tropical Rambutan says it's 2.5 US dollars for one kg for tasty one. That's a good angle. That's a good angle. Wow. Ooh, it's so soft. Wow. wow. Let me see. So in Thailand, they prefer durian that stays kind of firm on the outside. So you can see I can pick this up really easily. But mm -hmm. the inside is like really squishy. So if I were to mm -hmm. squeeze it, it would just become a giant mess. Um, and this is the Nokia variety, which is a little bit drier, more nutty. Gaurav says not yet in India, but I planted a few trees in my balcony after brought seeds in from durians I ate in Malaysia. Wow. There's a lot of durian in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, I believe. Um, I think there's kind of starting a little bit of an industry down here. There's some bigger farms. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I heard of like a nursery and stuff and things like it's very interesting. I'd love to visit someday. 
I know like few of my Instagram friends have said like, you know, they've, they've grown like durian trees in Florida. Are they, they're growing durian trees in Florida right now. Yeah, I think you can grow the trees, but I don't know if you can get it to fruit because the weather. Mm. Like, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> but when the temperature drops, all the leaves fall off the tree. So even though the tree can survive, it just like gets too uh, like damaged like over and over again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not sure. Yeah. eight oh one says, "Yep, yeah, I post my Avengers to Lindsay." Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's been giving you reports on how his <laughs> to real oh, yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Nice. So what what does the yeah. durian taste like in um, Thailand? Um, there's a, a range of flavors, but in general, I would say that the durian is importantly um, more of a firm texture. So they like durians that stay sticky or stay um, have like more of a skin to it, so that even if the inside is creamy, your hands stay like not messy. They don't like anything mm. like in Malaysia. You can have durians that are like so yeah, cool, right? yes, <laughs> like soft of ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Like this is very soft. It just looks hard because there's no like texture to it. There's uh -huh. no wrinkles, um, uh -huh. but it is actually fully soft and fully ripe. Yeah, right. but in Malaysia they like it like I say scoopable. Like you have to like like drip through your fingers, right? Yes, but, yes. Um, here they're like ooh texture, <laughs> right? So that's the number one thing. Um, and number two is that they don't like bitterness. So their durian oh. should be sweet. It should have lots of caramel and nuttiness, but very little uh, bitterness and no alcohol. They don't like alcohol. Whereas Malaysians are like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally. We that's want the, the biggest bitter difference. and want the alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So that's the biggest difference I see um, between Malaysia and, and Thailand durians. We have lots of tree ripe durians here. So the idea that you can't get like soft durian in Thailand is wrong. You can get fully oh. tree ripe durians here as well. Um, and they're very good. It's just a little bit different. Yep. Yeah. So Gaurav was asking, where is Chef Yin from? Malaysia or Singapore? I'm in Malaysia. Um, I'm right now in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Yeah, not Singapore. Although I used to travel to Sing Singapore quite a bit for work previously. And not so much anymore. Yeah. Have not spent a lot of time in Singapore. <laughs> it's, it's like really intimidating place. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think for the um, it's really good for the art scene. Like we're yeah. usually there because because us used to perform every year at the Esplanade. So um, that on that side is really good. They've got like really good music festivals and um, just like a really good performance and um, art scene there. Um, and also, I think in terms of health and all that, I think more people are aware about what veganism is. Mm -hmm. And um, they've got really good vegan food, actually, in Singapore. So that's what we, we look forward to. We, we like, like the vegan food, and then we really enjoy the, the art scene there. But um, it's not something that I would want to, you know, go there for like a, a long trip or live there. But, you know, once in a while, just to pop, pop in and, and um, see things and all that, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, because the art scene gets a lot of funding. Yeah, they get proper oh. funding and they do a lot of uh, good planning. So, so yeah, that's pretty cool actually. Beautiful. They've got like really good art, art museums and um, yeah. yeah, yeah, live music scene. The jazz scene is also yeah. Richard, we're talking about Singapore. <laughs> you like Singapore a lot. We've only been once together. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's clean. It's structured. Yeah, yeah, so Gaurav people, says, I've never been nice to Jamie. To it's, it's nice to visit, but it's a place where your soul will die. Yeah, that's why right. I, I wouldn't live there, but I, I, I like sterilized. <laughs> also, we have sterilized. friends who, who um, they basically have a guest room for us there every time we go there. So, yeah, so it's easy to, you know, it's nice to just stay there and, and meet up with them and meet up with their kids and all that. So it's it's... It's a nice trip whenever we go. Yeah. Sounds really nice. Yeah. We'll have to go sometime. Our friend just invited us because they have like durians out in the forest in Singapore and the trees are flowering now. So he says the season is oh. going to be like, mid not like flowering, I guess they're like, like little fruits now, but he says the season is okay. like mid to late July and he wants us to go. So I'm like, maybe we should go to Singapore. 
I think it would be really cool to check out the vegan scene because the vegan scene in Singapore is, is you know, they have better, be- like, it's just slightly more progressive and more ahead of Malaysia, I think. So I think that would be quite cool as well. <gasps> Do you have, do you like Korean food? I've never had Korean food. Because they have like a, they have two vegetarian um, Korean restaurants and a lot of vegan options there. So that's what I, what I kind of miss because like everywhere in Malaysia, you only get like bibimbap and japchae that is Korean. Whereas um, in Singapore, they have like boneless kitchen and one more, I can't remember what it called, Daewoo? Deja? I, I don't know. Well, if you ever do go, I'll, I'll send you a list of places to okay. check out. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll end up at the same time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, it's interesting because I think there was at least twice I was in Singapore during like um, durian season. So where, where, where I, I, I stayed, the Airbnb that I stayed, it's like every time we walk out, we see like all these durians and they're all like from Malaysia. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but they're, yeah, but they're selling it in Singapore dollars, so it's like way more expensive. So, so I don't think I can't remember. Have I had durians in Singapore? Actually, I did once because um, I was conducting a raw food workshop, and then the the organizer of of the workshop after the workshop and then she took us out for durians. So that 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 was cool. But yeah, we were just eating Malaysian durians. <laughs> it's like really. Like, there's not a lot of variety either. It's like all Musang King, you know. And they, they rename the Musang King all kinds of crazy names, you know, like King of Kings and King of the Hill and Black Gold and Black whatever. So yeah. Yeah. I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, what, what would be the best durian in Malaysia? I mean, like, I know, I think Musang King is kind of, like, overrated, right? I mean, like, what would you think? But, or maybe like your top three. Well, I like, I mean, Musang King is a good durian. It's very stable. It's pretty like, it doesn't get affected by weather in the way that other varieties do, right? Like some varieties are really like, this is a good year for it. It tastes really good. And some are like, it rained too much. It's crap. You know, like it doesn't really mm. unstable weather. Where Musang King is pretty predictable. Um, it's mm. a good thing about it, right? In terms of like commercialization, yeah. industrialization. But in terms of like, you know, your own personal favorite, Musang King would not go on my list of my personal mm. favorite area. How about you? It's, uh, it's good for city people. Uh, I mean, it's a great area for people who can't have fresh durian at the farm. It also ships great, so like, it doesn't spoil as fast as a lot of them. So if you live in Singapore, you're probably going to get better quality from a Musang King compared with some of the other varieties. So now yeah, I think if, awesome. if people are... Um, if people would want to, like, it's their first time eating durians, what would you suggest that they try? Maybe the top it three. Really, it depends on them because I have seen a lot of people try to introduce really sweet durians to beginners. It doesn't mm-hmm. always work. Some people really hate sweet things. And for them, it's just going to be a turnoff to have, like, something so intensely sweet. So mm-hmm. um, I would suggest that you ask the person what kind of things that they like. You mm. like chocolate or dark chocolate or you know what what's your wine preference you drink your coffee black or with milk and then there's durians that are more bitter and durians that are more sweet and then i would give them one of those that fits that kind of category um and that would probably right. have the best. yeah the best chance um so it's a little bit more complicated because well, durian is complicated well i love i love white chocolate so what would you suggest <laughs> white chocolate? I, yeah, yeah, I really like white chocolate. Mm, you should have some mung bean or something. Yeah, mung bean or maybe capri. Something. You probably mm. like, like coconuts also. Yeah, do you like coconut? Yeah, yeah. Coconut. I love coconut. Yeah. Yeah. So in Malaysia, yeah. probably something. Yeah, I would say like capri or mung bean. Um, yeah, I've had the Capri Maybe. from um, Baosheng. I had a the one, the Capri. I think it's one in Dama, actually. I don't remember the name now. Pearl, Black Pearl. Black Pearl is very good. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Pawa, maybe? But it's a little bit bitter. It's less on the sweet. Um, the centipedes can be very sweet. Maybe 604 is sort of in that like really like creamy and fatty. 
but not like having a lot of like bitterness or alcohol notes be kind of what I would go for. Yeah. You know, I, I heard um, Chef AJ say once in, in one of her lives saying that um, she had durian and she didn't really like it, so she never tried it again. Um, what would you say to her to, or like, how would you convince her to? <laughs> Chef AJ? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you know if she had it fresh or frozen? I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah because yeah, I think a lot of people have like misconceptions and I'm just like, it's the best fruit in the world. How can you not like it? <laughs> If you just haven't it, found the one it, it that you terrible. Mm. Like in the United States, mm. sometimes it's terrible. Like I've thrown away so much durian from the US oh. and it was disgusting and like smelled bad and it was really expensive, you know, it was like twenty dollars a packet and it's just like, yeah. you know, and like well, I can just like throw it in the bin. Yeah. Um, and it's just because when it's exported they don't harvest it at the right time and they don't mm. freeze it properly. Sometimes it's not handled right and sometimes it's not stored right. And like all kinds of bad things can happen to it along the way. So yeah. I would say if someone didn't like it, I would try to find out what happened. If it was mm. really like they had a fair chance or if it was really just like, like so many people that I've tried to talk to about it, they came on vacation somewhere and they tried a durian and it was like completely overripe, you know, or like completely mm. underripe. Or they had it in the United States and they got like a brand that was like a really bad brand or something like that, mm. you know. So I would just like try to find out what happened and then you can make a recommendation based on that but yeah. we have a very low failure rate with, with people who are first trying a durian very low failure rate most people like it if you give them a good stuff yeah, yeah because because you know what good durian tastes like and you know where to get the best durian so you're like <laughs> yeah. You know, you you bring people on durian tour. Okay, so someone asked, um, else compadre, what any opinion about durio? Okay, I don't know how to pronounce this. D u r i o. Yeah. Oops. Oh dear, she left. I think she got cut off. Uh, so Gaurav says lack of quality of exported durian makes first time experience horrible. Yeah, that's such a pity, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, Edwin Ho. Hello, Ernest. Hello, Naja. We were talking to um, Lindsay and Richard of Durian Writer. They run durian tours. They also ship frozen durians to um, US, Europe. Um, yeah, and um, they're like durian experts. Okay, hello, Ruby. So let's see if they can get back on. If they can't, then um, if they can't, then and if anybody else has okay, request to join. Okay, she is requesting to come back on. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Hey, hello. Sorry. No problem. I don't know what happens. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Yeah. There's a question. Uh, oh, yeah, the Durio. Uh, what's your opinion on the Durio? Yeah, they didn't put it in the du Durio Kutagensis. Guys, put it in the question box so they can put it up. <laughs> Durian Live. Hi, Durian Kudagensis, Durian Pulu, depending on where you are. Um, there's better varieties of it around Cebu, and I like the hybrids of it that come from Java, and now they have it in Thailand too. They call it Dang Indo when it's a hybrid of it. Um, I really like it when it's like really dark orange and creamy. I don't like the lighter yellow orange varieties that are kind of like waxy and fibrous. Um, but yeah, in general, they're much more fruity. You don't have the like onions that you can find in dirt, uh, Durio's Botanus. Um, it's more like a uh, jackfruit bubble gum sweetness instead, uh, but the creaminess of, of a dry durian. Yeah. Nice, thank you. And Watermelon and Lime has a question. Doesn't Ted Carr live in Canada? He likes durian, I think. I wonder where he gets it. I know Ted Carr loves durian. He always talks about how addictive it is. And I think one I mean, of uh, so. I mean, he lives in BC. <laughs> he lives in like, like the um, 
one of the, the places in Canada that has a really high Asian population. I'm sure they have Asian grocery stores. Oh yeah, I think he said he got it from the Asian market. If yeah. I if I'm not mistaken, okay. yeah, I know. Like in one of the um one of the bundles, one of the ultimate raw vegan bundles, he actually had a he actually contributed a durian cake okay. recipe. Yeah, and I always wanted to make that, but you know, when I take my durian, I'm just like, oh, I'm just gonna eat it. I'm gonna make it into a cake and then wait for five hours before I can have it. Yeah, so, what I liked about the recipe that we did is we didn't use fresh durian, we used freeze dried durian, which was really exciting to me because when you're making like raw cakes and stuff, it's always a problem that the recipe is too wet. You have that experience? It's like when you blend stuff, it's like it's too wet. And I wanted to use the, the durian powder as a way to like absorb the moisture so you would get a better texture in the brownie. Um, I thought it worked mm. really well. So I was pretty excited about that. Yeah. So yeah, th this is the durian brownies, guys. Uh, oh, um, Lindsay has also put up a reel on how she made it. So go check that out. You know, um, we're both in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. If anybody wants to get the bundle, the bundle is in the link in my bio. It's only available until 11th of May for a very short period of time. So um, if, if you guys want to, you know, start out on a raw vegan diet or, you know, if you are already a seasoned raw foodie, but you want to make more interesting creative recipes like Lindsay's Durian Brownies with freeze dried durian, or you want to make my Asian um, desserts, or you want to make uh, um, uh, Lisa's wraps, yeah, check out the bundle. It's all there. Yeah, well, they should check out your uh, recipes. It's so cool what you're doing. Like, um, well, oh. we're on the variant tour, and we're doing, we're vegans, right? So we're doing, like, a vegan version of a lot of different, like, dishes. And it's so exciting for people to get to try all the local, like, cuisine, right? Like, that's, like, from this area, but vegan. Because um, they might not get an opportunity to try it otherwise. And it's, like... It's really like fun and cool to be able to actually try like real, because like you're you're like actually like born in that culture, right? So you like grew up with mm. those foods, so you know yeah. how to convert it, right? Um, and yeah. I think it's really, really cool that you've made like that accessible to people who are like want to have a healthier lifestyle or healthier diet. Um, yeah, and I I and I have two um, durian recipes in the bundle as well, the durian cookies and the durian pie. And both Richard and Lindsay have tried eating those as well. And they, <laughs> yeah. so what, 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 what do you think about it? <laughs> uh, my favorite was the durian pie. I like that one. Yeah. yeah. That was really yeah. good. But the nice. cookies came out really cute um, and very shareable. If you could have those like on your table and like have tea with them or something like that. Yeah, I think those would go, go really well with tea, actually, because us had it with tea, so that's that really nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I know we have only about three minutes left because we want to keep this to half an hour. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about your durian tours? What's it like? Fruits we collected? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These two. So I already showed you the pula right? Mm. So we've got like these, which are uh, species of rainbow pants. But we've also got, um, we just go around and collect fruit basically on the course. Okay. People can try stuff. We have two varieties of snake fruits. These are Thai snake fruits, um, oh, salico yeah. matter, which is different from the snake fruits they have in Indonesia. These are like juicy um, and a little bit like sweet sour, and they're not crunchy like the ones in Indonesia. Um, We've got some wild mango skins over here. Here around the table. Wild mango skins. Wild mango skins. We got. We actually have three species of wild mango skins. So these are one of the species. I don't know if you can. Can you see these guys? How the how um, different do they taste to the you know the the mango skins that are sold in Malaysia? I don't think I've had wild mango skins before. Although they I taste different. Right? Yeah. I've had those kind of snake fruits, I think, in Langkawi. Yeah, they look like that as well. They're not like the snake fruit here in KL. Let me find some more, some more wild mango skins for you in my bag of goodies that we collected. <laughs> <laughs> so this is cool. This is um, a type of wild persimmon here in Thailand called a maprop. Um, oh. Yeah, Dios Pyros Malabarica. You can see these guys right here. That was a really cool one that we got to find today. 
we have mafai, which is a relative of rumbai, but it's more sweet. Oh. Uh, what else do we have in here? Here, this is what? how the snack looks inside. What do melon and lime say? So many foods I've never been able to try. <laughs> so you have to uh, go on uh, Lindsay's durian tour. Because you don't just eat <laughs> durians, you get to try all the local foods as well. And, and, and you know, she, she's like a very knowledgeable guy. And they have like tons of activities going on. We got Santal. Yeah, so today we just got back from the waterfall. So because we're an eating tour, we have to like balance that with like outdoor activities and stuff. So we did like, um, see what we do. We did durian farm and then we went to like a medicinal herb garden where there's this really cool guy who knows like all the wild fruits and stuff, which is where we got to collect a lot of this. And then we had like a local lunch. Someone made lunch for us at their house using stuff in their garden, which was super delicious. We had like ferns and squash flowers, um, and a bunch of stuff like that. They had some bamboo. We had a lesson on like grafting and propagation so they could learn how during varieties are made and like how trees work and stuff and that's the waterfall and now we're back and i've got like a half hour before dinner <laughs> we're having during makaman which is going to be delicious so super okay. packed day. yeah thanks so much for doing this on your super packed day um watermelon and lime says wow they look so different from the persimmons i get here and then uh, she also says, yes, I have to, ha ha, <laughs> as in like, uh, join your tour, yeah. We, yeah. we do have so. two more tours coming up in Malaysia this summer. Um, they have a couple of spots left. There's one in June and one in um, the 10-day Malaysia in July, where we travel around like, a bunch of different states in Malaysia. So, yeah, we still have some spaces left for those if someone does want to join us. Yeah, so you guys can check it out. The link is in um, uh, Durian Writer's bio. Um, on the June tours that she is organizing. And um, I think we're coming to the end of our IG Live today. Thanks so much, Lindsay and Richard. It's, yeah. it's good to see you guys again. And um, yeah, I think um, when you're back in Malaysia, we should catch up <laughs> and have more durians. It's a responsibility to organize the live for the bundle and everything. Cause like, yeah, we really like support it. And we think it's really awesome it's happening. Um, but yeah, when we're on durian tour, it's just, the whole day is, is totally cool. Yeah, I totally understand. I totally understand. Yeah. Okay, guys, take okay. care and uh, have a good rest of your tour. And um, we'll yeah. see you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for joining. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.